So there's a difference in our lives between the theory of the things that we know that we would like to be doing and the reality of the things that we are actually doing. And sometimes those two things come together and sometimes there's an enormous disparity between them. I want to talk a little bit today about what yoga philosophy has to offer us in terms of how to shorten that gap. But sometimes I think about this as um, two versions of myself. It's like there's avatar Katie who wakes up at five o'clock in the morning and drinks a green smoothie and meditates for two hours and is infinitely patient with her children and uh, diligent in her yoga practice and moves through the day mindfully and on and on and on. And then there's real Katie who sometimes does some of those things and often doesn't and aspires so deeply to do many of those practices. If I set myself up too much to try to align always with Avatar Katie, what's going to happen is I'm going to have the experience of feeling like I'm failing. I'm setting myself up for a regime that I'm unable to sustain and it leads to feelings of guilt and failure and actually what can often happen when we create that dynamic is that we give up completely. So we get caught in this kind of pendulum swing, this yo-yo of um, I might set an intention for a morning practice, let's say, and I'll write a program and do an hour of morning practice. And if I don't do that, then I think, oh, I didn't do it. I failed. I'm going to do nothing. And so we move like this kind of swinging between extremity. I found in my own practice and when I look at the yogic scriptures and reflect deeply on how it is that I can cultivate and develop sadhana. Sadhana is a beautiful Sanskrit word that means conscious spiritual practice, committed and conscious spiritual practice with intention. I have found that the way that I can really cultivate that in my life is through slow and steady and incremental steps. And one of the things that I know is that in in this time and with um, the access to information that we have, very few of us are lacking in knowing what we need to do. Almost all of us know what a healthy diet looks like. We know what a healthy uh, nighttime routine looks like, you know, turning off screens and taking time to meditate and go into a restful state before sleep. It's not about the information. It's not about knowing what we need to be doing. So often it's about the implementation. It's about the actual practice and application. So my invitation to you would be to have a look at your kind of avatar self, what, you, what it is that you aspire to, and to choose one or two small things on that list, and it might be quite a long list, to choose one or two small things that you would most like to apply, that you would most like to transform, and then a very practical and tangible uh, baby step towards that. So for example, I might decide um, one of my strongest intentions, and this is true in my own life, is to be uh, more patient with my children. I have a pretty fiery um, temperament in Ayurveda. Uh, we would call that pitta. And um, often that manifests in a way of like wanting to move through things very quickly. And I can project that onto my children. And so I have the intention in mind to um, bring down that fiery energy, to be a little more patient. And in practice, I can then create some baby steps towards that. And so uh, one of the incremental steps in that project might be not raising my voice. And so I can set this intention to um, not raise my voice. And it's a practice, right? And so if I fail, if there's a day when I do raise my voice or there's a moment where I'm rushing and I'm projecting that energy, um, we can practice self-compassion, we can practice self-forgiveness and know that there is always the opportunity to come back and to uh, try again. In every moment, in every moment we have the opportunity to come back and to try again. It could be as simple as one deep breath that allows us to reset, to recalibrate and to make a diligent attempt at um, keeping our goals in mind and not getting too far pulled away and certainly not getting pulled back into that vortex of giving up completely because we didn't succeed 
in the way that we had hoped immediately. Next time you find yourself getting caught in that trap of self-judgment, which might lead you to kind of give up on your aspirations or the goals that you've set for yourself, particularly in terms of your spiritual evolution, your spiritual practices, Take a moment to really practice self-compassion. You can place your hands on your heart. You can tune in a little to the energy in that space. You can take a couple of deep breaths. You can offer yourself forgiveness, loving kindness, and hold in heart and mind the possibility that we could make a shift, we could make a transformation in any moment. Namaste.